Welcome to Powering SMB, the premier podcast by Zentegra One. We're here to turbocharge your journey through the realms of business strategies, emerging technologies, and the secret sauce of customer experience. Stay tuned as we decode the complexities, celebrate the milestones, and equip you with the tools, inspiration, and cutting edge insights to skyrocket your business dreams. This is Powering SMB. Good afternoon. Good morning. I guess it could be good evening, too. Uh, welcome to another episode of Powering SMB. Uh, I'm your host, uh, Mark Vincent, along with uh, Sean Washington. Um, Greetings. Yep. Hey, how you doing today? Good? Yeah, not bad. Um, All right. Fifth meeting of the day and uh, still nice and fresh. <laughs> I'd like to hear it. Today, we're going to talk about... Um, Fortinet Accelerate, which was their um, big trade show event conference that they do every year. Um, I was lucky enough to get to attend this year and uh, kind of talking about everything Fortinet in general. Um, for those of you who don't know what Fortinet is, uh, they're a security vendor, really good one. Um, they make a whole suite of products and solutions to help keep your networks secure. Um, how many objects? Can I give you a little uh, quiz here, Sean? How many different Fortinet products are there? Any clue? Well, you're trying to make me look smart, apparently. Um, I'm going to guess there's probably about 60. Wow, OK. Yeah, uh, not bad. Uh, 43 okay. is, was cool. my count at, this, at the event. They had a nice um, sort of like partner pavilion expo place where they would show off a lot of their solutions. A good portion of that hall was their own solutions, and they literally would have a number um, next to each one of their own solutions. I think I came up with 43 uh, unique products that they sell. Um, if it's something that needs to be secured, these guys seem to have a, a solution for it. So, yeah, my, you know, the way that they kind of market themselves is an ecosystem. They use the word fabric. So they're security fabric and they create all these ancillary services to complement what i would say is probably their core business as a uh, next generation firewall and um you know mark had the pleasure of attending accelerate i did not so um this is going to be kind of me asking questions and understanding the newest changes there because you know when you build out one of these ecosystems as a software vendor um it's constantly evolving. There's constantly new features or drivers for new features that are coming out. And I think they had some pretty exciting things uh, that they released at this latest event. They did, they did. They had a new version of Forta OS, which um, is their operating system. What makes them unique than a lot of other vendors is that they do everything they do in silicon. So um, as they make changes or add feature sets, it actually becomes a new chip and a new operating system that that you know takes advantage of these features um Forta os i believe is up to version 7.6 i believe which was the latest one that yeah. was released um had a ton of new features had some really interesting stuff with ai which i thought was pretty cool um literally on the, one of the um, morning sessions uh they had uh, one of their engineers come up and literally had a dialogue with um, the Fortinet device in natural language, trying to threat, uh, you know, track track a threat coming through the network, um, having it do things like search through a log file, looking for specific user, looking for a pattern, and once it identified that, it kind of broke it into to a very easy to understand chain of events. And if you would have to done those same kind of operations uh, manually, this could have taken, let's say, two to three hours worth of investigative work to find all of the information this thing found in what it equated to maybe a two and a half minute conversation with a computer. Wild, you know, um, very, so is very that, cool. Is that something that's integrated into their kind of SOC service or is that in the OS on each device? Well, the thing is, you have to have the underpinnings and all of their stuff to allow for this. So the idea of this latest version of their OS is that they have the APIs, they have the underpinnings, the tools built into the OS to allow these kinds of things to happen. 
Um, I think as the year progresses on, you're going to see more and more actual practical applications of those underpinnings being sort of put into place. The demonstration that they showed on the line was a product called Forta Analyzer, and um, it basically looks at network traffic and, and is able to kind of cut it up and slice it and, and look at stuff to kind of look for things that maybe are out of the ordinary. Um, it also has uh, you know, the ability to read log files. So it would go through logs based on the conversation you're having with this AI. It would go out and look at the logs that were captured and be able to kind of put together a quick a blow by blow of what happened. So they were looking for an attacker that was trying to move laterally through a network and they were able to pinpoint exactly when they came in, how they came in, what they were able to try to do. Luckily, the solution was robust enough to stop them. But it, it it definitely showed that the chain of events, which was really, really neat. Um, very cool demonstration of their products. Yeah, and I would assume that probably everyone that's in this space is going to start integrating more and more, quote unquote, AI type functionality into their overall platforms. Yeah, I would agree. I think it's probably the, the next evolution of almost everything that touches us at the moment, right? I think the, the, the key with them is that they, at least they're forward thinking enough to, to have... Um, put this in the core part of the OS so that it becomes a feature that can be used throughout their entire ecosystem. Like I said, they, these guys, um, the kind of the running joke is if, you know, anything stands still long enough, they'll put a Forta label on it, right? Um, they have Forta cameras, they've got Forta APs, Forta switches, Forta firewalls, you name it. Everything's got Forta, Forta name to it, right? Um, what makes it unique about their solution stack is that Typically, once you're in there, you were mentioning the term fabric. They call everything their security fabric. Once you add a Fortinet device into their fabric, it's manageable from a single pane of glass. So you can see, you know, your switch ports, you can see your APs, you can see your firewall rules all from the same screen. And you can even set up all your rules to make them interconnected in a much simpler fashion than you would if you had, you know, different vendors for different pieces of all this stuff. Pretty amazing. Yeah, and I think um, one thing they've really been talking about is this unified agent. I say that's probably the next biggest yeah, milestone. That was, the other, that was the other announcement there for sure was the unified agent. And what when I say unified agent, like you know, typically, let's say you're with a firewall vendor and you're going to download a VPN client, right? Uh, that VPN client's sole purpose in life is to just be a VPN client. It's going to get you onto the network. Fortinet has kind of changed the way that they're thinking on how they deploy their um, end, end user component, right? So anything that touches the edge, the complete edge, the, the, the end user's machine, they have a Forta client. That Forta client, what, you know, for most folks, is just going to be a VPN client. But it could also be your antivirus. It could be your ZTNA client. It could be a bunch of other things all deployed from one singular application. So when you're talking about security in the future, especially I really love the idea of, of these kind of concepts where you have a BYOD network, right? You're bringing in your own device to connect into a corporate network. With one single install, you can handle all of the endpoint protection that you need. You don't have to install 12 different products. Fortinet client, if it's licensed correctly, can do everything you'd ever want with one piece of software. It's pretty cool. So we we actually were just having a conversation with one of our clients, consulting with them on how to grow their business. And um, this exact topic just came up. So I kind of wanted to dive down that rabbit hole a little bit more with you, Mark, and understand sure. this. The concept of BYOD or bring your own device is... Um, pretty prevalent in the concept of uh, working from home or this hybrid work from home environment. And uh, this is a way to kind of not install or manage controls or at least administer a device, but at least be able to manage the network security and controls at the application layer. I don't know, maybe you could explain that better of exactly sure. how this modern IT would work as juxtaposed with Fortinet solutions. Perfect. Um, I like the idea of this one a lot. Um, imagine a scenario where you're a small business and you're needing to procure laptops for your employees, or you don't want to necessarily deal with the burden of managing an inventory. 
I see a lot of folks nowadays that are like, hey, instead of me going out and buying a laptop for my employee, I'd prefer to see if I can give them a stipend. I give them a certain amount of money that they can spend on a laptop of their choice. They can get what they're comfortable with, what they like to use. But you also want to make sure that that device is secured when it's talking to your network. The Fortic client, the way that it's built now, supports what they call ZTNA. So every time a person launches an application on that device with that client on it, it's looking at the um, the application itself. Is this application secure? Is it needing any patching? Is there anything that could be a potential problem for me to launch this app? It passes that check. Then it looks at the network around it and says, hey, is there anything squirrely going on here? No, that looks great. It passes the next test. Then it connects to corporate network, only gets the information that it's specific to that application. And even once you're logged in, it's continually looking at the connection between that application and the outside service that it's using, validating that nothing has changed in the interim. Um, all of this is happening in real time without any end user intervention whatsoever, which is the cool part about it. So there's no, you know, jumping through a bunch of different hoops to make this magic happen. It just happens by default when this client is properly set up with this technology. One time someone tried to easily explain ZTNA to me because this is a pretty, pretty challenging concept for someone who's not technical. Um, and the explanation was, well, you can have the same controls at your home office that you would in the actual corporate office with the firewall. Correct. Any application, whether it be physical app or even SaaS app, you can control where they access it, how they access it, what device they access it from. As long as you're using that client to make that connection and you have the backend built out that way, it's really pretty awesome. It gives you a, a, a bunch of creative control over what devices you allow into your network and how you allow access with those devices um, at a level that just before, you know, it's never heard of. It's really at the application layer versus anything else. It's not at the network layer. It's literally at the app, which is pretty awesome. And honestly, in a world where SaaS becomes almost like, you know, 75% of the workload being used by most companies nowadays, it, it makes a lot of sense that this would be the direction that a lot of people, um, you know, are going in. Now, if we're going to explain this type of valuable solution to a small business or a medium-sized business that may not have any of these types of controls in place, and they're embracing a work-from-home environment, what what is the value? Like, how do you talk to someone and say, do we want to have full control over your applications while people work from home? Because this is going to protect you from something. Like, how, what is the best way to kind of educate someone on that? I think that the best way to educate them that way is to explain that this is probably the most um, non, how can I put this in a, in a way that makes uh, the most sense? It, it's non-obtrusive way of being able to um, access data without, or access applications without necessarily impeding on the rights of other people if that makes sense. Sure. Protecting privacy uh, from the perspective of using SaaS applications. So we can monitor the um, efficacy of those applications, security of those applications, but not necessarily intrude on any specific personal information that might be on those machines. Correct. Yep. Yep. You're not peering into it. You're literally looking at it at a transactional level. That's maybe the easiest way. Wish it would have come with that one a minute ago, but that, yes. You're looking at it at a purely transactional level at an application layer. If that sounds, hopefully that doesn't sound too technical, but if you launch an app, every time you launch an app, every time you run a web page, a web SaaS app, it's going to evaluate again, who you are, where you're coming from, the local machine, the state of that machine, and the state of the connection that you're connecting to. If all of these magical items all say, hey, this is great, it's going to allow that traffic to come through. If it doesn't like something in the middle, it's going to quarantine you and throw you off the corner and say, hey, you need to resolve this, this, and this before we can allow access because we feel like something here is insecure. And so I think another, awesome. yeah, 
and um, it doesn't impact the performance, I'm assuming, completely transparent no. to the end user. No, no, the end user has no <clears> idea all the stuff is going on. Um, to see a demo of it is pretty awesome. I highly recommend it. I mean, it it does, you know, like like one transaction, I was watching somebody using a business app when I was at Accelerate, they were sort of explaining ZTNA to the, the crowd and how it works. This person would launch this application and it did about 35 to 40 things to validate the security of that entire transaction before, uh, you know, it would allow everything to pull, flow through. But it did all this in the background in a matter of a sub-second. So you don't know that it's happening, but it's nice to know that it's being done, right? Yeah, that is definitely pretty cool. Yeah. My understanding is um, this also helps people enforce policy for a multi-factor and single sign-on. So it can kind of uh, force people to be on a VPN. Um, Absolutely. It's yes. a facilitator of that. Yeah, if you thought of if you thought of that client being the gateway for everything, right? And you could enable SSO on all of your applications to use the same SSO provider. In theory, you go through this client, you log in with your credentials and your 2FA. Anything beyond that, you know, you're golden. Uh, you know, and you can set how often you're being prompted for that 2FA transaction if there's something that's really highly regulated or critical and you want to make sure that you know, after two hours, even like if you're on the thing for an hour, if it's beyond that, hey, I, I want you to validate you are who you say you are. Again, you could set that. And all of that is very variable based on the business application and need. But yeah, it is nice that you can use this product as your central login for pretty much everything. And that one uh, secure connection will get you everywhere you want to go. And then, of course, you can integrate it to things like Okta or Citrix or Parallels for these digital workspace type solutions. Oh yeah, and it, yeah, and that's the beauty of SSO, right? Once you have the SSO provider and you have that, what they call the source of all truths, right? It is the, the master that says, my credentials are the credentials. We don't care about anybody else's. These are the ones that matter. Once those, that has been defined, there's pretty much almost every app under the sun now will support that same methodology. Say, hey, I'm gonna use these existing credentials you already have to validate you are who you say you are and to allow that transaction to flow through. Yeah, very cool. It's also very complicated and hard to understand, but. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there, I'm afraid you, you are a little bit correct there. I mean, it's, it's not something that a lot of folks could probably implement on their own, but that's why there are guys like us to help, right? That's the whole reason we're here is to help put solutions like that together for folks that need it. Now, I believe that everything we've talked about so far is <clears throat> about using Fortinet's fabric to implement best practices and prevent uh, any sort of threats, right? Now, they also have some tools, newer things that they're developing. I mean, they've had them for a while. Um, they can integrate with this for a client to be more on the reactive side, um, uncovering threats in the network and mitigating those too. I'm talking about their uh, EDR type solutions. Is, are those also integrated into this client? They are, they are. So uh, basically they have all the threat controls integrated and everything, everything that you'd ever wanna do on an endpoint is part of that client now as of the latest releases. So that you don't need to install 50 different pieces of software, you install one client. And all of that stuff is technically sitting there lying in wait. Depending on how you have it licensed, different features, you know, will take into effect. But from an EDR standpoint, if you're talking about um, detection response, they can see on the endpoint if you've been compromised or you've been attempted to be compromised. That can trickle through that entire fabric where they can say, hey, I see that, you know, John Doe over here, he downloaded an application. Once we ran it through the virus system, we can see that this is, um, you know, going to be a problem. Uh, it's going to quarantine him off and make sure that that doesn't get um, any further on the network. If they have something that maybe came in from a th third party that was non-Fortinet, um, but it somehow finds, it finds its well into the Fortinet ecosystem, because all these devices, again, talk, once it's been established, they can help follow the, um, the flow of all of that. Um, back and forth to be able to to validate that you know this is this is um 
a threat that needs to be handled. Right. So I lost my own thought there for a sec, but yeah, um, essentially it, it works that way all together. Having the client, a single client is a pretty awesome thing. Excellent, yeah. Much easier to administer, I'm sure, too. Yeah, imagine a scenario where you've got a bad actor, say an employee that goes rogue and he wants to take a bunch of data, company data with him or maybe some financial information. If you have, they have a technology called CASB that looks at this sort of thing, right? I said, oh, these these numbers that you're pushing, trying to upload here are bank account information. You know, you can stop them at the gate. And since if you have everything on the same fabric, the second that transaction tries to go through, not only is it going to kill his endpoint, but it's going to cause his endpoint not to be able to connect to the AP on the network. May, may shut his network port off on the switch, you know, puts him in a, in a, and a, a basically a, a disallow state at the firewall level it says you can't this this user in particular this device this person does not only have access until this particular issue is resolved if they have edr then same thing the the team over at fortinet has a knock they've got a network operations center of of folks that are there 24 hours 365 days a year looking for these kinds of events and when they see them pop up then they notify the end user or the organization, hey, this is a problem you need to um, look at right away. And they can give you the breakdown of, you know, transactionally speaking, what happened that caused that state to happen. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. So it's, it sounds like this uh, unified client uh, basically has a good number of the products we were uh, incorporating into those 43. Uh, Correct. Or yes, right in that does. client. Well, yeah, I mean, there's underpinnings that allow access within those to the client. It's not necessarily that the client, those 43 products are built into it, but that client knows how to interact with those other Fortinet services in a way that's much more tightly uh, integrated than, say, you know, five different vendors' products you're all trying to put together to make something work. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely nice to just deal with a single vendor. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean... If I were a net new business right now and I were setting up a brand new company from scratch, I would definitely try to keep as much of that new infrastructure in Fortinet fabric. If I have to buy a new equipment anyways, why not have everything that can talk to one another on a, on a level that you're not gonna get anywhere else, right? right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, some of the other things I see in some of the features here are kind of protecting um, Internet of Things. Yes, they have a full IoT package that can look at um, different devices at a different level. A lot of times these devices don't have um, the ability to log into them or they don't have an easy way of dealing with them, right? They could be things in your house that you're not aware of or things in your office building you're not aware of that are just small little Internet devices that do something special. Like a camera. Um, like a camera. Yeah, exactly. Like a camera, like a light switch control. A lot of controls um, have basically little microcomputers in them. They have an IoT module now that looks at all of these devices as it's going through the fabric on your network, either via Wi-Fi or via um, the switch. It will keep track of all these devices that are on there. And then they have a database that they're constantly running threats, you know, threats against to validate that those pieces of equipment are good. If they find that like a camera, let's say, has a firmware version that has been known to be, you know, used by hackers, they will identify that on the network and they'll quarantine that device um, until you patch the firmware on it. And they'll give you instructions on how to do that. And so I watched a live demonstration of that. It was super cool. At the, that uh, is very interesting. Yep. Yeah, because there's a lot of people don't think about that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, I was going to say, it must be all overlooked. These things in your house. I know in my own home, I have a million light switches and thermostats and cameras and everything else. And you kind of just, in some ways, take it, um, take it for granted that that stuff is patched. But nine times out of 10, it probably isn't, you know? Right. Um, and this kind of gives you that feeling. They even had stuff, which is not for really, I hate to say it's not really a small business thing. Maybe it could be in some cases, but they have um, controls now for looking at even chips within a network device or a device that's um, like a manufacturing type of situation where they can tell you, okay, this, you know, water pump for, you know, that's going to pump water for 50,000, you know, homes on, on, at a water district uses a specific type of firmware chip 
that we've known that can be hacked and addressed. And you may not be able to solve uh, a, a solution for that other than coordinating and, and uh, sort of keeping that device separate or air gapped in some kind of way virtually away from everything else. But it has the ability to identify that. I never even quite honestly have ever thought of anything at that level. And um, it was Siemens uh, had a booth there and they're talking about these giant industrial like factories and being able to look at components inside those factories because you know you see it on the news nowadays these uh, terrorist organizations state-sponsored terrorism they're trying to take out people's infrastructure as part of their game plan and you know Fortinet's working with people that are at that level at the at these big uh, manufacturing to be actual to try to stop that as well um wild stuff yeah it's amazing yeah. you're gonna be a cybersecurity company you gotta start thinking of it all i guess yeah, I mean, there's so many different ways that people are trying to gain access to systems nowadays that I would have never even thought years ago would have been a thing. But apparently, you know, um, there's a lot of smart folks out there that thought of things that we never have. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, it helps to have us. You really need a security vendor in there, you know, that's got your back that way for sure. Any other specific feedback from the event? Anything? Um, yeah glaringly important i mean we've touched on a lot of really interesting technical features those, those were the big three i think really it's it's that that unified client it's the newer version of the os um obviously they're they're they always talk about the chip cycle right so every year two years they come out with a new physical chip that is like literally twice as fast as last year's model they didn't stop there again they had that as well I think previous to this event, it was they, they they do them by letter. So, you know, if you bought a 90F firewall, let's say, as an example, right? As of the last month, if you're buying a new version, they have new new chips inside of them. Now they're the 90G. Speed wise, the G is probably 2x faster than the F, which is nuts. But that's just the world we live in, right? Every couple months, every year or two, they come out with a better model. They've really been kind of interesting on how they go about it because they really do their own hardware software. So it's it's much tighter integrated and it's a lot faster as a result. Um, they're able to do stuff transactionally speaking a lot years better than a lot of their competitors that way. Um, that was really the only other takeaway I think I got out of it. It's it's the client, it's the newer OS, it's some of the ZTNA stuff and some of the AI stuff they're doing was the big takeaways from there. Um, you know, a month from now, this will be old hat and there'll be 50 new announcements from them. They're a pretty fast moving company and they've got a lot of products, but it was a good, it was a good show. Nonetheless, we, we enjoyed it. Um, I was there with about, uh, I don't know, maybe 20 customers, clients and um, some other Centegra staff members there that were actually there doing more important things than I was doing on the networking side. Um, I was more the executive uh, tagging along uh, versus uh, some of our network engineers that were actually there to get training and, and uh, certifications done while we were there as well. That's a big part of that show is they have people to come in and you can take your tests and get certified on the latest products and all that. Um, so a lot of our folks were there doing that as well. Perfect. Sounds exciting. Yeah, it was good. You know, uh, it is uh, conference season, so I imagine we'll have a couple of podcasts coming out over the next couple of weeks that'll go over whatever the latest greatest to come out of this um this year's uh conference season so this was number one well excellent awesome <clears throat> well thank you for your time as always my friend if uh you know uh hopefully you guys got some good information out of this and you know we'll see you next time thanks for listening this right. has been thanks, everyone uh, powering smb see you guys next powering time SMB. thank you